Hi, I'm Kent. In our last video, you saw me assemble this. This here is a test I'm doing. It's a way to try and join these 3D printed parts together temporarily, good enough to hold back plaster. This video is really a continuation of the last one. So if this doesn't make sense, go ahead and go back and check that one out. I put in threaded inserts, and then I put down a layer of clay and bolted it all together. The idea is that this will mimic the outer shell for a plaster pour. So going back a few more videos, something like this that lets us create plaster molds like this. Unfortunately, this didn't work. The plastic itself turned out to be not watertight. So I went ahead and thickened up the walls and tuned the settings. So I think I'm in better shape there. I also talked about several different ways to seal the plastic to plastic connections. So the screws and inserts are mechanical, but we need something that would prevent the liquid from leaking out. In the test, I did water. In reality, we need to do plaster. And I tried just regular old throwing clay. And I don't like the throwing clay. When I was doing it, I wasn't quite sure about it. But after the test failed, and I've been thinking about it a little bit more, I'm not sure it's a great option. One is I think I put down way too much. But in general, I think the throwing clay is too stiff. The gap between the 3D printed pieces is actually relatively small. So basically, we need to fill the small little crack that's in here. And the throwing clay is just way too thick and way too viscous. So I need something that can be squished in there and not hold the joint open. So since then, I went ahead and removed all the 3D inserts and took off the clay. And I've been thinking about this a bit more and done a few more tests. However, before I get into that, I wanna answer a couple of questions about why I'm doing this at all. So this is the form that we have that we wanna make a plaster mold of. And indeed, that's this right here. And to do this, we don't need any joints at all between the 3D printed pieces. We can just go ahead and set this upside down, put something around it, and then pour the plaster. And I have a reliable way of getting this out now, basically make it cold using a solution of alcohol and water. That makes this below the freezing point of ice, which causes it to shrink and I can pull it out. So I have a good way to get the molds out. Why am I going through the extra time and effort to 3D print an outside and then connect them together. And that question has come up in a couple different ways. One is I could just go ahead and create a form around this. So people have suggested using plastic or metal and creating a spherical form. So I don't need this 3D printed piece. One of the reasons I like this is that it's basically using just as much plaster as I need. So there's a consistent wall thickness or relatively consistent wall thickness. It's only about uh, an inch thick, two and a half centimeters. And I can do this programmatically. I don't need to worry about kind of manually getting this in just the right spot. So that's one of the advantages. The other one is this is just lighter weight. Maybe you could create some sort of taper form around this easily. I'm not too sure about that. I think cylinders are probably the, the most straightforward. And so if this were a cylinder, we'd have all sorts of extra plaster back here that we wouldn't need. That just makes this heavier. So picking these up and moving them around, especially when they're full of slip, it's just much nicer. So I really like this form and maybe that's a personal preference. If you guys wanna use this software and only use the inner mold, my failings won't be hurt. Feel free to disregard and not even print the outer mold if you don't want it. So that's why I have this outer mold. And then the other part was this ring here that I need to connect together. And again, there are several comments about ways to basically get rid of this ring. I think the most common one was basically put down a bed of clay. I can then squish this into the clay, squish the outer mold into clay, and then pour the plaster that way. I do think that would work and it would get rid of the joint that I have here, but I am rapidly going to need to deal with joints in these 3D printed pieces. So one I've alluded to already, I cut this, so I'd really like to be able to pull this apart so I can release the plaster. And as soon as I can pull this apart, that means I can then make it in multiple pieces like I did my test which gets me around some build volume issues with my 3D printer, I can print larger 3D outer molds. So that's a small benefit. The reality is I'm actually working towards a multi-piece mold. Well, I think this one piece mold system will be great and really useful and I do want to use it. I think the real advantage of this will become when I can do multi-part molds. Imagine this had an undercut in it. That means we couldn't do a one piece plaster mold. We wouldn't be able to release it. I would need to cut the inner mold in half and then I would need to join that around to the outer mold. So if we imagine cutting this in half, I would have a wall here and a wall here that would hold back the plaster on the sides. I would then need to be able to disassemble those pieces and therefore all this work that we're doing in terms of joining the 3D printed pieces for this one piece mold will also transfer over into doing this multi-piece mold. All right, so hopefully that clarifies some of this. Again, like if you wanna go ahead and do the outer mold a more traditional way, go ahead and go for it. Okay, back to the test. How can we get these things to come together, seal long enough to hold the plaster and hold the plaster back and then come back apart? So one of the things I mentioned in my last video that I wanted to try was actually gaffer's tape. So this is kind of a cousin to duct tape. It is meant to be removable. However, in playing around with this in a small scale test that I did off camera, 
Seems like a bad option. The gaffer's tape doesn't hold on as well, especially once it gets wet. Then all the gaffer's tape kind of releases and comes apart. This is a great tape, just not the solution for what we need here. The next thing I tried was using some petroleum jelly. So this stuff here, so this is kind of a human safe grease. And I went ahead and I smeared it between the joints. So like along this ridge here, I put some, I put some on the adjoining face, I put some on the bottom and squished it together. And that was great. I think this is the right viscosity. It kind of pushes out of the way just as you need it. And it did create a watertight seal, at least in my small scale test. I think this could be a viable solution. It does have a few drawbacks. One is it squeezes out, and so you have to deal with the squeeze out, which is relatively easy, like in these tests. However, in a fully assembled mold, that may be harder. And it's all sticky and greasy. That's basically the purpose of this stuff. So it can actually be used to moisten your hands, kind of like a lotion. And that's probably not a bad thing for potters, in particular in dealing with clay and plaster, which tends to dry your skin out. But overall, it kind of leaves this residual sticky mess that I'd rather not deal with if I don't have to. I think maybe in very limited quantities to really just put a light coat on might be a good option. The other problem with putting this on is it's kind of invisible. It's hard to see exactly where you put it. And similar to the hot glue or the sticky wax, it might be easy to get a spot where you miss just a little bit and that would be a leak. So there's kind of a lack of positive indication of a proper seal. I actually think caulking is probably one of the better options. I have dismissed this very early on because I don't want to wait for the basically 24 hours for it to cure. I think it will tack in like under an hour, it depends on the type of caulking you get. So if you're willing to wait, I would go ahead with this. So you could put a bead down just on this inside groove right here, squish it together, use a couple of inserts basically to use as a clamp and for alignment, let it set for the day and come back and be plastered the next day. So I think this is a viable option. It's just not one that I particularly like for my process. So I was thinking about this a little bit more and came up with another option. That's this stuff here. So this here is a foam tape. It is neoprene foam, closed cell foam, that is relatively thin and on the back is an adhesive so it can be taped down. This is actually meant for weatherproofing. The idea is that it can compress a little bit and then hold back moisture. I don't think it's designed to be fully submerged, but again, we only need to hold back plaster for about half an hour. So in this video, I wanna go ahead and test this out. I did some small scale pilot tests and I think it's looking good. I wanna go ahead and try it the full way. So the idea will be to go ahead and tape this down to the edge we can then go ahead and cinch things together using the threaded inserts and the screws and hopefully together that will give us the watertight seal. So I went ahead and printed out a new test. This one has the fixed issues with my 3D print so hopefully it won't leak. And I've reused a lot of the inserts so you can see a little bit of black plastic on this. This is for some of the earlier tests. So they are definitely reusable. I've scaled this up a little bit and changed the shape to be a little bit closer to a pot. So again, the idea is that these will be put together like this. And then there's a bottom plate that will go in the middle. I've already started putting down some of the gasket and we'll go ahead and do that to the rest. The other thing I did is I did a slight redesign to the corner here. And this one here, there's this little plastic protrusion that I have. So when these mate together, there's no space for any type of sealant. And the new one, I knocked that down so that I can have a small gap right here that I can then fill with the foam. I wasn't sure how I would handle some of the corners and it turns out I can actually just bend the radius pretty easily. So what I wanna do is run the foam down around the bottom and here so I have one continuous piece. So I'll pull back the backing and start to put it down. And again, I have this ridge here. This is actually the mating face. I'm keeping the foam back from that just a little bit. Across the bottom. So here I don't have that ridge and it's because this piece is printed going like that. So I wanted it flat against the bed. So all the recess is in the mating face. It's in this face here. That's one of the tricky things about doing some of this design is thinking about how it's going to be printed and making that happen with as few supports as possible. I'm going to snip off the end. All right, so there's the gasket all the way around. I'll go ahead and do the other two off camera. All right, so I got the gasket to go all the way around. It fits in that little recess and now we have a gasket to gasket mating face. So that'll squish together. 
I went ahead and tweaked the separation here. I think it's 1.25 millimeters. And I think the gasket itself is uh, just over a millimeter big. So we have two millimeters of foam trying to squeeze into 1.25 millimeters of space. So I think that will create a nice tight seal. The gasket wraps all the way around the corner. So when we go to the bottom, there's no point where plastic's touching plastic, except for our mating faces. Hopefully that means there's not a path for the water or plaster to get out. So with that, I can now go ahead and screw this together. So I went ahead and started a few screws in this to make it easier. And the screws will push right through the foam. Just need to try and find the insert on the other side. All right, there's a couple screws all the way around. I haven't stunk it down all the way just yet. Go ahead and put the top on. I'll go ahead and put the rest of them in. You don't want to over tighten this. The PLA is brittle and can crack. You also don't want to deform the plastic. I've actually switched over to PLA plus, which is slightly less brittle, but still it's an issue. And likewise, you can twist the inserts out. There's the inside. It's a little dark, but got a nice tight seal all the way around. It's nice and aligned. We might have more threaded inserts and bolts than we need, but again, I'd rather go on the overkill side. All right, let's go ahead and fill it up with water and see if it holds it. So the bench is nice and dry, so we'll notice if there are any leaks. Let's go ahead and pour some water in. There we go, that's up to about the bend here. So I see a couple small pinhole leaks there. There's another one on the back side that you can't see. But overall, this is holding well. Let's add some more water. All right, up to the top. This is looking good. I do have a couple of very tiny pinhole leaks in the PLA still, it seems, but not like last time. It's not pouring out. And I think the plaster is denser and thicker than the water. So I'm not really concerned about those. When we do this for real, I'll probably go ahead and put a tray under it just to see if we actually leak any real plaster. And I've got a leak over here, but I think this is in the PLA. I don't think it's the seal as well. So this is definitely a good test. There may be a few tweaks I can do to my print settings as well to try and basically over extrude the PLA just a little bit to see if it'll fuse a little bit better. The primary test was definitely to see if the rubber gasket's holding back the water and indeed it is. So this works way better than last time. I'm happy with the foam. It's way better than the clay. And I think the threaded inserts are doing good mechanically and for alignment. We may go ahead and revisit this going forward and iterate on it some more, but at least I think for now we have a good workable solution. I think what I'm gonna do is go ahead and take these changes and see if I can incorporate them into my software to see if I can have it generated automatically. Right now, this is still a lot of manual work. And then in the next video, I think we'll try this out on a real form. We'll go ahead and put plaster in this and see if it works. If you have any questions or comments, let me know, thanks.